Good morning and welcome to Kid News, generously sponsored today by the Ledley family of Boston, Massachusetts, to say a big happy seventh birthday a few days early to Teddy and to celebrate all the laughter, enthusiasm and knock-knock jokes he brings to big brother Jack and little sister Grace. I'm Tori. It's Friday, November 18th, 2022. And we begin with everybody's favorite word game, finally catching up with the times. In its first refresh since 2018, the official Scrabble Players Dictionary now includes slushy, faux hawk, and zonkey, which describes the offspring of a male zebra and female donkey. Long-used abbreviations like guac, sitch, and convo are also now Scrabble official, as well as more contemporary words like adding, referring to the widespread use of the at sign on social media. Other new and not-so-new words making the cut are some pretty familiar terms like Jedi, Matcha, and Vaxxed. According to the Associated Press, about 500 new words are listed in the latest edition, including one your grandparents may have used, Yeehaw! It's been a heartbreaking week for Taylor Swift fans. With less than 24 hours' notice, Ticketmaster canceled today's public sale for her upcoming Eras Tour after selling more than 2 million tickets during Tuesday's pre-sale. Millions of verified Swifties spent hours online only to come away frustrated, disappointed, and empty-handed when the unprecedented demand overwhelmed Ticketmaster's website. One fan tweeted that it was proof that the Hunger Games could happen in real life. Now the ticket seller is feeling the heat, not only from Taylor Swift devotees, but from congressional lawmakers questioning the fairness and legality of what could be considered a monopoly in the industry. Tennessee's Attorney General, Nashville is where Taylor got her start, has already launched an investigation. It's the end of an era in Washington, D.C. Yesterday, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi announced she will not seek a leadership position when the new Congress convenes in January. In a speech at the Capitol, Ms. Pelosi, the nation's first and only female speaker, said that after nearly two decades in power, it's time to pass the gavel to a new generation of leaders. She does plan to remain in Congress and represent the people of San Francisco. Her announcement came one day after the Republicans officially captured control of the House of Representatives, winning a total of 218 seats so far, with a handful of races still up in the air. A big celebration is taking place tomorrow at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue when Naomi Biden, the president's 28-year-old granddaughter, gets married at the White House. It will be only the 19th White House wedding, but according to Yahoo News, the first to take place on the South Lawn. Details of the highly anticipated event, as well as the guest list, are being held tightly under wraps, and it's not yet clear whether journalists will be allowed in. One thing we do know is who will foot the bill. The first family says they, not taxpayers, will cover all of the costs. The last presidential family member to wed at the White House was President Richard Nixon's daughter, Tricia, in 1971. Not every penguin at the New England Aquarium in Boston gets a pair of shoes, but for one senior bird, it was strictly doctor's orders. 24-year-old Beach Donkey is nine years older than the average penguin living in captivity. During an exam back in 2020, the vet diagnosed her with a case of pododermatitis, also known as bumblefoot. Simply speaking, she had calluses on her feet, which, if left untreated, could become a serious problem. But after removing the calluses and prescribing some medicine, the vet gave Beach Donkey a tiny pair of custom booties to protect her feet while she healed. After two years of specialized medical treatment and lots of extra fish treats, her trainers are happy to report she's fully recovered. That's it for Kid News. Now our Kid News quiz, generously sponsored today by the Ward family of Menlo Park, California, for a double birthday shout out to two Kid News listeners, Ryan and Kyan Kolbeck from nearby Atherton, a dynamic father-son duo celebrating their birthdays this coming Sunday and Monday. Happy birthday to you both. Now, today's quiz. When was the last time the official Scrabble Dictionary was updated? Twenty eighteen. Who just announced she would not pursue a leadership position in the next Congress?
House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Who is getting married at the White House tomorrow? President Biden's granddaughter, Naomi. What is the more common term for the condition known as pododermatitis? Bumblefoot. In our Kid News Kicker, talk about being in the right place at the right time. Corey Humans, the lucky fan who caught Aaron Judge's 60-second home run ball at Yankee Stadium, is about to cash in big. Humans has decided to put his souvenir up for auction and, judging from past sales, stands to make a hefty bundle. The auction house is predicting the historic ball may sell for upwards of $3 million. The highest price ever paid was $3.05 million for Mark McGuire's 70th home run ball back in 1999. Pre-bidding is set to begin next week, with the auction expecting to close on December 17th. Kid News runs on the kindness of our listeners, and we want to again thank today's sponsors for their support. First to the Ledley family of Boston, Massachusetts, for underwriting today's episode, with a big happy birthday next Tuesday to Teddy, and a special hello to big brother Jack and little sister Grace. And our quiz sponsor, the Ward family of Menlo Park, California, on behalf of two rock stars, Ryan Colbeck of Atherton, who according to wife Annie, is a most wonderful father, and who also tells everyone he knows to encourage their kids to listen to Kid News and have a growth mindset. Thank you, Ryan, and happy birthday, too, to Kyan Kalbeck, and a shout-out to all his friends and teachers at the Bing School at Stanford. Hellos, too, to our other Kid News classrooms, starting with Mr. O'Connor and his soaring eagles at English Landing Elementary in Kansas City, Missouri. Miss Ritter and her Freedom Flyers at Freedom Elementary in West Fargo, North Dakota. Mr. Ricketts and his warriors at Boonesboro High School in Boonesboro, Maryland. To Nebraska for Mrs. Schultz and her Lions at Lincoln Elementary in North Platte, and Mrs. Vampola and her Knights at Archbishop Bergen Elementary in Fremont. A few programming notes. The Kid News team will be celebrating Thanksgiving with friends and family next week, so our next episode will be on Monday, November 28th. Another great podcast to check out in the meantime is Who Smarted? They cover lots of interesting kid-friendly topics. More info can be found on their website. And on our website, look for this week's Week in Review quiz and in your emails, our weekly word search. Have a wonderful and safe holiday, and we'll see you back here for more Kid News Monday the 28th.